Hey guys, King of Charman is here. Alright, so you're probably sick of seeing Open Ultra League, but it's here to stay. And Open Ultra League has a few top teams that actually are very surprising, but do very well for this league. As you see here for the top performers, it looks like Snorlax is making a rise. Snorlax is a great generalist in this league and does very, very well for Open Ultra. Also looks like Umbreon's also making a rise as far as it's very powerful. And it doesn't seem like a lot of people are using him just because you don't seem to have level 50. The one big one that you probably can see is Talonflame. Talonflame is look Talonflame, Registeel and Lapras, and Talonflame, while well, Talonflame is the surprising one, is being used a lot. As you see, the usage is nuts. Anyways, these are the top five most powerful teams. As you see, a lot of top meta picks are still pretty dang good. As far as legendaries go, with Tal Reggie Steel and with Giratina, but it looks like with Talonflame entering, things are getting a little interesting. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started to the most powerful teams in Open Ultra League. Alright, so with as it being Open Ultra League, a legendaries and mythicals are allowed. Team number 5 is a triple legendary team featuring Aeroblast Lugia, uh, Reggie, uh, and Double Reggie. Reggie Ice and Reggie Steel. This is kind of nuts. I'm going to assume this is an XL Registeel just because it's in here. I think a le level 40 still works very much, but level 50 also does well. I, uh, yeah, level 40, yeah, we'll, do, we'll assume it's a level 50 Registeel, just to put it out there. Assuming it's a level 50 Registeel, so Registeel XL. Registeel XL is a monster in this cup. As you see here, the difference is this is before, this is after. So if you do have a Registeel XL, it, get, it becomes better and it's very powerful this team is extremely bulky with both reggies and lugia this team is supremely thick good across all the boards but this thing has a lot of bulk so this team is really freaking tanky and i guess it just runs over everything with tankiness lugia is a very interesting league just because of the fact that you can see melmetal and articunos etc ice and steel is a very popular lead combination so Lugia is very interesting. Along with that, Gear Alter kind of ends your life. So I'm guessing that's what Dragon Tail is for. With Dragon Tail, you take out Gear. Well, not take out Giratina Alter, but it gives you a better chance against Giratina Altered, and it gives you a better chance against let's see what would resist like Dark types, etc. Or Obstadoon, I'm guessing. Anyways, as you see here, Lugia doesn't do too bad against a lot of leads the only concern is like i said a lot it's a lot of patterns lugia will lose lead a lot so it's kind of weird this team is put together but reggie steel and reggie ice have a lot of pressure just because of lock on and their subsequent charge moves so it's a really good team i still think it's a really good team but like i mentioned before it's kind of weird but this i think it's just me not having so much of an understanding how the team works because it's so awkward but the, the only potential threats for this team is Charizard and Ampharos. Literally, it's only steel, like, electric types or that you probably will never see. Charizard, which you don't, you can see a lot in Open Ultra, but you don't, but Lugia is very tanky. And it doesn't do bad with Sky Attack. As you see, and Air Blast does heavy damage. A lot of its weaknesses aren't super popular. The only concern is probably Registeel and Giratina Alter. Registeel will wall you. Melmetal also does a decently good number against you because Melmetal is Melmetal is a steel type, so it does resist pretty much everything you have. Same thing with Registeel. And Giratina Altered with Shadow Claw does do a heavy amount of damage on you. Shadow Sneak is not too friendly with you, and even then going straight Dragon Claw with Shadow Claw does heavy damage. I'm guessing Reggie Ice is your safe switch. If you win lead with Lugia, then you switch into Registeel to wall the subsequent Cresselia that comes in or the Cresselia safe switches. And like I said, Reggie Ice is very powerful. Blizzard and Earthquake is a powerful combination. Takes out a lot of the dragons and like takes out a lot of dragons and a lot of the steel typing. So Reggie Ice is really freaking good. Just make sure you don't get flash cannon because if you get flash cannon or if they drop rocks on you, it's going to hurt a lot. Overall, this team still this team doesn't have a bad threat score. Like over 600 is kind of high, but it's not too bad. Your most common threats, other than Giratina Altered and Reggie Steel, you won't see too much. Team number four features Swampert, Cresselia, and Talonflame. I'm gonna assume this is a Talonflame XL, as you see this is the before. Really good, and here's the after when you add Talonflame XL. Talonflame XL is a fantastic closer with Incinerate, does very, very well, and it's also number one lead. But with Swampert in the lead, you do do you do incite a lot of pressure. Cresselia still is a very good safe switch. It's still very powerful, especially if you get the Moonblast debuff. As you see here, this team's really freaking good. It is sporting an Earthquake Swamper, which you normally do for Open Ultra League because these Earthquakes hit really hard against things like Giratina Altered, etc. 
As you see here, excellent coverage against the entire meta. It really does really well. Talonflame XL plus Cresselia, you got two bulky mons plus Swampert's pressure, you got something that's really good. It's a very powerful team. As you see here, all three of your Pokemon will threaten Giratina Altar in the one shield. With Swampert against Giratina Altar, you could literally go straight Earthquake, pop both shields, and then sacrifice Swampert as your lead and take out Cresselia and Talonflame. There's a lot of things you can do with Swampert. Of course, against Cresselia, if it's a Grass Knock Cresselia, it kind of sucks. But with Swampert and Talonflame, you could do very, very well. As you see, this team is very, very powerful. The only big threat is Giratina Origins or even Giratina Altar, just because. Sw yeah, just because Giratina Origins does do heavy damage against Cresselia and against Talonflame, given that you aren't able to Moonblast or Burb it, but it's still it's still very dangerous. So be very careful of Gira O or just Giratina in general. But this team is very powerful, very generic team, very generic because I say lap because. Cresselia and Swampert's very generic, you just put a Talonflame XL in the back. That's literally all this team does, but it's very effective and very powerful. As you see, Giratina O and Lugia are your biggest threats. Lugia is kind of awkward, but Lugia does in fact do very well against this team because it's very, very bulky and strong. So because of Lugia's bulk, you could do really well and it does very well against this team along Giratina Origins. Those two Pokemon aren't super common though, so you can do very well with this team. Also, Venusaur isn't super common either. Again, this team seems to do with, like, with Swampert leads, you can sacrifice Swampert entirely and break shields, then use Cresselia and Talonflame to clean up. Or you can win the lead with Swampert and switch in accordingly. It's really up to you. But this team is very powerful. Sports a 596 threat score. Under 600 is a great threat score. So this team does very well against Open Ultra League meta. Very, very good in my book. Team number three features Cresselia, Registeel, and Swampert. This is the season, what, like season three big meta team? No, seriously, this is the super big meta team. It's like the super big meta team. Like it's he it's hella, it's so, it's so meta. I don't want to analyze it. I don't want to analyze it. That's how meta is. It's so meta that I don't want to analyze this team. Anyways, this team's like, it looks like this team still does very well. Registeel XL looks to be the, repl like it looks as utilize Registeel. Even, well, Honda Registeel works, but I'm going to assume this is a Registeel XL. We're going to assume it's a Registeel XL. And then we're just going to put the rating for the team here. But this team is insanely bulky just because you have two Mega Tanks overall. As you see here, with an XL Registeel, this team is insanely powerful because it's hyper meta. With Swampert's in the back and taking advantage of the Talonflame combination, possibly in the back as well. Because you can probably see a lot of Talonflames in the back because it's really good. And it can beat Swampert in the closer as long as it burbs you. Swampert is very powerful. This is a very meta team. This is, I believe, Season 3 or Season 4 Super Meta. This was definitely Season 2 Super Meta, where you had Cresselia, Registeel, and Swampert. Or, yeah, this was, this is a, it's a, it's the Super Meta team. With the Super Meta team, as you see here, it's ungodly powerful. Extremely powerful against all combinations. Cresselia and Registeel are two giant meta tanks that are super expensive, and Swampert going Swampert. That's pretty much it. Swampert going Swampert. This team really doesn't have many holes other than I would say Chris Reggie Steel in the lead. But all you could, all you really, you could mirror Reggie Steel if you want to, and play the Reggie on Reggie Calm issue. There's a lot of things you can do with this team, just because it's super meta. As you see, this super meta team sports a 630 threat score. However, it's insanely powerful. With your biggest weakness being Talonflame, I guess that's what's good about Talonflame. Talonflame does give a hard, does give this team a very hard time. You can probably put Future Sign on Cresselia to make it better instead of Moonblast. However, this team is still really, really good. As the number three team, I'm not surprised that Super Meta is number three. Someone out there must have been like, hey, you know what? I'm t I don't want to do anything fancy. Let me use Super Meta, and Super Meta still works. Team number two features Swampert lead, Reggie Ice as your closer, and Reggie Steel as your switch. What is up with these double Reggie teams, man? You have a trash can and a Titanic Iceberg. On the same team, dude. Like, for real. Like, I'm just saying. Like, it's a hell of a good team. I know, but dang, man. Reggie, uh, Reggie Swamper going. Just Reggie Swamper going to town. Anyways, I'm assuming this is a XL Reggie Steel. Again, here's the coverage is without it. And then as soon as we switch it to an XL Reggie Steel, which I'm gonna assume it's an XL Reggie Steel, or yeah, or powered up as much as you can. This is what you get. So yeah, still very, very powerful. As you see here, Swampert, Reggie Ice, and Reggie Steel is a powerful combination. I'm assuming Reggie Steel is your safe switch with Reggie Ice in the back as your closer. Very powerful closer. 
This team to Swamp Route lead is very good. It's still very, very popular in open ultra league. It's just that good. It's very powerful. You can either break shields or sack Swamp Route entirely or you switch out with it. I've seen plenty of it in every season I've played open ultra league. Yeah. Anyways, this team's biggest threats, it doesn't really have one. It seems to be Swamp Route itself is able to do very well against this entire team. However, Swampert on Swampert, whoever wins CMP generally wins that match or plays energy well. So it's the mirror match that you're kind of going to have a little bit of a problem with. But other than that, like I mentioned, Obama Snow XL is probably your worst nightmare. However, Obama Snow XL is covered by Reggie Ice and Reggie Steel. So you could just switch out accordingly. I think your biggest problem here would probably be Surfetch because Surfetch with Leaf Blade can pressure you and it punches down your back row. That's the problem with Double Reggie. It's what happens when you put an Iceberg and a, a Trash Can together. Anyways, as you see here, this team is really weak to fighters, mainly Surfetch just because of the Leap Blade. I I can see why this team is very powerful because even though you even though fighters are very strong, they're not very bulky. So because of that, you're able to essentially nuke the fighters like after you break their shields, which is I'm guessing what Swamp Bird is for. Because even if you do switch a fighter into any of these mons, you're still gonna take they're still gonna take a lot of shields. So just keep that in mind. This team does have a lot of holes in it, for so for it for being like the second most powerful team, someone must have played this team very, very well. No, seriously. <laughs> they must have played it really freaking well. Really, really well. Because as you see here, it has a pretty high threat score. But other than that, I'm pretty sure that if you learn how to play this team, it can do very well. Just because, like I mentioned, you can break shield, sack swamper, and just nuke everything in the back. I think that's the purpose of this team. Alright, so the most powerful team statistically in Open Ultra as of right now is Politoed, Melmetal, Swampert. Why am I not surprised that Melmetal and Swampert are together? Anyways, this is, team is literally kill... No, seriously, it's literally kill Talonflame. Like, it's a literal kill Talonflame team. Rockslide will eat Talonflame to Oblivion. Both of your front, both of your lead and your closer literally just end Talonflame's life. This is a literal... The number one team is kill Talonflame. Anyways, we're going to assume this is an XL Politoed, as you see here. The problem, the really interesting thing about this team is it kind of has really bad coverage. <laughs> it, yeah, it kind of has really bad coverage because you have two water types and a steel type. That's not a lot of coverage. Even if you do give this an X, the XL treatment, it still doesn't do very well. As you see, it's an XL poly, or Politoed XL. Yeah, XL Politoed. And then you have Melmetal and Swampert. I can see how it does very, very well. However, it's kind of, it's very interesting, actually. So what this does is the Politoed here features Earthquake. I think Blizzard would be better to be honest with you, considering Blizzard allows you to like nuke a lot of things. But like here, let me if you go back to it. Let me just double check because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's just double check. No, not that one. No, that one. No, not that one. No, not that one. I don't fail. I don't fail. I can do this. I can do this. Yeah, it does have Earthquake. So it does have Earthquake. It is an Earthquake Weather Ball variation. We're just going to assume that's level 50. We're just going to do that. Assume that's level 50. But as you see, this is a very awkward team. This is a literally kill talent flame team. Kill talent flame team. Literal kill talent flame team. That's what makes it so awkward. But as you see, it still does. It has a ton of pressure. You are going to either eat a ton of charge moves or use a lot of shields before this trio is done with you. As you see here, Giratina Altered has a lot of fun with you just because it pretty much resists everything you have to offer except for Earthquake. So you can use Blizzard on Politoed. However, I think I know why Earthquake is on Politoed so that you can threaten Steel types. Another problem is Cresselia. Cresselia is a huge problem for this team, especially Grassnot. Yeah, Grassnot is going to do a lot, of, a lot of heavy damage on you. But outside of Cresselia, you're able to put If you pressure shields, you do a lot of chip, you earthquake through, take out Cresselia. This thing, there's not a lot stopping you from running over the meta. Again, this thing has a tremendous... This team has a tremendous amount of pressure and does very, very powerful. However, if you look here, there's a lot of things that kill you. Yeah. Surfetch will give you a problem just because of Leap Blade and it runs... Yeah, Leap Blade and Grass types are your worst nightmare. Along with fighting types as well, because with fighting types, Melmetal does not like fighting types. However, you're gonna, like I mentioned, you're gonna put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Giratina Altered is probably the biggest concern that you have because it does resist pretty much all of your. It doesn't resist Melmetal's charge. Well, it does resist superpower, but Giratina Altered can still tank a huge chunk of Rock Slide before it goes down. And you have to Earthquake it with Politoed or Swampert unless it's near death, so you chip it down with Hydro Pump or Weather Ball. 
very high threat score. So I don't understand how this team made it as the most powerful team in Open Ultra, but I'm pretty sure the. I'm pretty sure there. I'm. I think I. I. Yeah. Pressure Politoed, Break Shields, Mel Metal, Swamp Earth Sweep. It's that simple. That easy. So even though it, it it has the highest threat score, but it's the most powerful team, because I, I can see why. Because with Politoed, yes, you can break shields, you can pressure shields, do heavy damage before you go down, and then just sweep with Mel Metal or Swamp Earth. Or if you have to switch out, Swamp Earth is your safe switch. So there's a lot of things you can do with this team. So. Very powerful overall. The amount, the intense amount of pressure. If you have Talonflame, it's gonna die. Uh, that's all I gotta say. If you have a Talonflame on team, this team's gonna kill you really badly. Anyways, yes, that is. This is the most powerful team on Open Ultra League. A Politoed, a Lugnut, and a Frog. Wait, is it a? Fr yeah, it, 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 well, not real. Is it a Gecko? It's it's a. I don't know. What is a Mudkip? I don't know. You can make fun of me in the comments. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is Open Ultra League's top teams, the most powerful teams for Open Ultra, where legendaries and mythicals run rampant, as you see here. Every one of the top five teams had at least one legendary or mythical in the team. So legendaries and mythicals are still super oppressive in Open Ultra League. That's why Season 1 Go Battle League was so hard, because you had to play Open Ultra. There was no way out. So that's the reason why Open Ultra in Season 1 was very difficult because, like I said, you didn't have the option for Ultra Premier. If you do not like a super meta, it's a little easier to analyze or tell meta patterns in Open Ultra League because it's not as chaotic as Ultra Premier. However, you can make the argument that Open Ultra is just is oppressive because just because the meta is so super oppressive. And Talonflame actually does better in this meta than it does in Ultra Premier as far as Premier Cup goes. So... That's why Talonflame, as you see here, is in one of the top teams, top five teams, as I mentioned before, because it's just that freaking good. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you want to do Open Ultra and you have these mods, Red Cresselia, Red Steel, and Swamp Bird still do really well. However, if you hate Legendaries and you want to save Stardust, or Legendaries and Mythicals, Ultra Premier is for you. I didn't break in a top team this time around for Open Ultra just because I didn't put the volume in. I've been really busy with my own life stuff, so creating content trying to be a therapist, everything. It kind of wilds up to where I can't spend as much time simming on pvpoke.com for training. That doesn't mean I'm not going to do very well in Open Ultra League. But anyways, as you see here, these teams are still going to serve you well in Open Ultra League. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Good luck on your Go Battle League sets. I hope you guys had fun in Great League. Now it's time for Ultra League for two weeks and then going back to Great League. And I will see you guys on the next video.